acclaimed writer and director Danishka Esterhazy is something of a late bloomer. The talented filmmaker was first a harpist and then a recording artist traveling in a band. But a passion for storytelling has always been with her. I actually, you know, stumbled on the world of filmmaking, which at the time wasn't as visible as it is now. I, you know, there wasn't filmmaking programs in school, and I didn't know anyone growing up who worked in film crews. But once I you know, got a glimpse of that world, I think it really changed everything. I started working in the film industry as uh, you know, at the bottom of the, the pile as a production assistant, you know, running around on set doing errands. And at the same time, I was taking training at the Winnipeg Film Group. So I was studying screenwriting and directing and working with actors, and I was making my own little short you know, with just a DV camera and my friends, you know, on the weekends while I was working on big budget, you know, Hollywood television movies during the day. And um, I guess those things eventually meshed until I started making more professional films myself. where everything was perfect. Here I was safe. Esther Hazy is well known for her visually stunning films, and she loves fairy tales, a favorite subject for her movies long before Hollywood's recent remakes. waiting. You cannot change the world by wishing. The Snow Queen is a great example of Esther Hazy's creative process. Those images, especially the image of the cold, powerful Snow Queen on her throne made of ice, always really uh, captured my imagination. And uh, I loved that book. And so I think when I started making films and and I was looking for subject matter to inspire me, I always usually begin a story with one strong visual image. And so that image of the Snow Queen on her throne made of ice uh, inspired me to write uh, a whole new story, which uh, involved you know, a little bit of the fable, a little bit of my own biography about growing up in Winnipeg in the North End, and, and a little bit of sort of, you know, just entirely fictional stories that allowed me to examine, you know, issues I care about. What could it dry it up? old woman possibly teach me. My grandmother, she just smiled. Esther Hazy puts a local spin on the famous fable, The Red Hood. And so I set my story of the Red Hood in uh, Manitoba in the 1920s and, uh, you know, in an environment, a farm of Russian immigrants. And I thought, well, that would be a really interesting story because Red Hood is, a, you know, an old world tale, an Eastern European tale, um, but it's, it's so well known, it's been interpreted by every culture. What would it look like set here? I didn't look for imagination or passion. I thought that I had made a safe choice. Filmmaking is such a challenging art because it is an art of visual storytelling. So you have to tell the story through your images, through your composition, through your color palette, through your cinematography. But it's also an incredibly emotional art form. And so you're trying to touch the audience. You're not just trying to uh, inspire them with beautiful imagery. You're trying to connect beauty and emotion. And so where the emotion comes in is the importance of the actor, the importance of casting you know, a great actor who can really convey all the emotions that your hero is going through. And, and then taking those and melding, you know, the environment, the setting, the lighting, the performance, the narrative, so that in the end, you know, hopefully it's a magical experience for the audience. They feel touched and awed by what you've been able to create. I think that as a filmmaker, I really try to focus on the importance of the creative experience. Um, I don't, don't worry too much about the festivals and the awards and the, you know, the popularity of the work, I try to focus on how important making the work is to me. Because I think as a filmmaker, it's a hard life too. 
and you'd only do it if you absolutely have to make art, <laughs> which I do. So uh, I try to appreciate it when I get the opportunities to actually create. How did people see me then? Was I really so different? I was not the pretty girl. Or the tough girl. I was the smart girl. For Shaw TV in Winnipeg, I'm Tracy Koga. Or at least I tried to be.